Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Well, that's a short definition of faith, Colin. Yes, let's just take two of those words. It's being sure and certain. I said yesterday that there are no question marks in faith. Um, you know, you sometimes hear people saying that faith is taking a leap in the dark or faith is being unsure of what is going to happen. Well, faith is not a leap in the dark. And if we're not sure of the outcome, then we're not actually in a place of faith. We're only in a place of hope. Now, hope is important, uh, but the subject at present is is faith. And faith is being sure of what we hope for. Hope hope is, is what lies in the future. But faith is sure that what God has promised in the future shall surely happen. So we are sure that Jesus will come again. We are sure that because we're born again, we will be raised from the dead and we will be part of God's new heaven and new earth and we will reign with him for eternity in his glory. So that's all part of our hope. We don't we can't understand these things rationally. They're, they're beyond reason. Uh, but we are absolutely sure and certain of these things because God has already given us the gift of eternal life. And eternal life is eternal. It's God's life. And that life does not end with our physical death. It goes on with God for all eternity. Now, because we, we should just tell our listeners who've just tuned in today that we are, of course, going through the book of Hebrews and now we're in, here we are in chapter 11, this great catalogue of people of faith. Yes. And um, uh, he, the writer takes us through uh, remembering that he is writing to a predominantly Jewish audience. Um, he takes us through people that they would be very well aware of from the Jewish scriptures. And so he's, he's showing that every one of these people was sure and certain, even though they could not see the evidence of what they believed at the time when they believed. In other words, they believed first and then later they saw what they believed. Uh, you hear a lot of people say today, well, I believe it if I see it. No, 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 it doesn't go that way. Faith is not seeing something than believing. If you see something, you don't need faith for it. But you believe it before you see it. So each one of these people believed before they could see. Now, he starts by saying in verse 3, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Now, that is believing the revelation that we receive in Scripture that God spoke and creation came into being. So, right from the very beginning, God himself was exercising the principle of faith. He spoke and it happened. Why? Because he spoke with faith, he spoke with authority, he commanded something to come into being, and it did so. And in 2 Corinthians 4, um, Paul says, with that same spirit of faith, with which God acted and with which Jesus acted when he was on earth. And with that same spirit of faith, we therefore believe and speak. So there's a sense in which we can say that faith speaks into being what needs to be spoken into being. You sort of see it with the eyes of faith and you speak it in prayer, you speak it in a confession of faith and it comes into being. That's the order. So, by faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what was seen was not made out of what was visible. You see, there was nothing to see until faith operated. Then you saw the outcome of faith. So that's the principle. And then he says, by faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks, even though he is dead. You see, there was no faith in Cain's offering. Cain just offered to God, um, if you like, 
what was easily given didn't cost Cain anything. But Abel's attitude was to put God first. God had to have the first fruits. God had to have what was best. God had to have what was pure, the finest and best offering that could be made. That was the outworking of faith. And you see, when Abel did that, he couldn't see how God was going to bless him as a result. But what we see is is Cain ended up as a murderer. Abel, of course, uh, although he was righteous, was killed by Cain. But the reward from God goes to Abel, not to Cain. It's, it's a very simple lesson, really, isn't it? Um, then he speaks of Enoch. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life, so he did not experience death. He could not be found, because God had taken him away. But For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Um, Enoch is one of these characters that appears and disappears in Scripture. God just sort of took him to himself. He didn't sort of have a natural, normal um, death or, or, or life span. Oh, and you see what the writer is saying, how, how could God do such a thing? Well, obviously his faith was in God. He, he did this with Elijah, didn't he? Elijah was just caught up to heaven. Uh, Elijah was a man of faith. Jesus, of course, was raised from the, the slab of stone in the tomb and was raised to life. So, um, you know, it's very, very important that uh, uh, we understand that often when you exercise faith, there, there's seemingly no substance for it. I mean, except that you're just trusting God. You're just trusting his word. It's not blind faith, it's open-eyed faith because your eyes are on Jesus. Your eyes are on his word. Your trust and confidence is in the Holy Spirit who is leading you into the fulfillment of God's purposes. I'm sure there's going to be people listening to you, Colin, who feel well, they don't know what they're waiting for. They don't know what they're expecting to happen. I mean, the people that were reading about and that you're talking about here had a very clear vision, a very clear idea of what they were doing. But for many people listening, they're just not sure. Well, of course, faith is essentially a relationship with God. And uh, God has put his Holy Spirit into us as believers so that we can enjoy a relationship with him. Now, as part of that relationship, we are to be led by the Spirit. In fact, we are to be under the control, really, of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is, if you like, the determining factor in our lives because we're living in trust for God. Now, if the Holy Spirit is leading us, then we have to learn to be conf- uh, we have to learn to be sensitive to His voice and confident about what He says to us, and act in trust in that revelation that He brings, so the, the revelation Sp- from the Scripture of the Word. The Holy Spirit plants the seeds of faith within us, in that sense. Uh, absolutely. Now, you see, in verse six, the writer says, "Without faith, it is impossible to please God." So what we are to be doing as Christians is listening to the voice of the Spirit because the Spirit of God will never lead us into sin. He will never lead us into failure. And it doesn't matter what the situation is. The Holy Spirit understands and he knows because uh, Jesus said the Spirit never speaks from himself. He speaks only what he hears. That is what he hears from heaven, from the Father, from the Son. And of course, the Lord knows the end from the beginning. So the Holy Spirit always knows what to say to us in any given situation. So to actually be the people of faith that God wants us to be, we have to learn to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit so we can pray according to the revelation that God gives us. And we can have absolute confidence if this is the way the Spirit is leading me, then this is what I need to believe, this is what I am to pray, and God in his faithfulness will respond. And what about the person who would say to you in response to that, Colin, well, how do I know that the voice I'm hearing or what I'm sensing is the Holy Spirit and not just my own reasoning and thinking? Well, partly the answer to that is we learn from experience. The complicating factor is when we're trying to hear what God is saying in a situation where our emotions are involved. Because then it's very easy to listen to our own emotions and to mistake those for what God is saying or for the will of God. Uh, We so desperately want something, we want it to be God's will. 
um, the obvious uh, situation where that is true is if you're praying for a, a close person relative who is seriously ill and and uh, seems to be dying. Now we know that God snatches people from the jaws of death sometimes and in miraculous ways heals them. Um, but you know, I, I've been involved for over 40 years in the healing ministry. And when you're in situations like that, sometimes you know, yes, this person is going to get better. Um, they're going to be healed. You just know that. Um, the situation may seem absolutely dire. The medical prognosis may be terrible, but you just know this person is going to live. You're not desperate about it. You're not crying out to God. You just know it's something very calm, very peaceful, very assured, very certain. But there are other times, you know, where even though people are praying desperately and crying out to God, you just know in your spirit, this isn't going to happen. Now, I don't believe it's always possible for us to know why. Sometimes you get the assurance that somebody's going to get better and other times that they're not. I don't, I don't know of anybody that can give the answer as to why that is. But obviously there must be certain factors involved and God understands those factors. But the important thing, Julia, is that when we're in a situation like that, we are trusting God with all of our hearts. But at the same time, we, we understand that it's not our emotions that God will answer, but he will, by the power of his spirit, bring into effect his good and perfect will. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 